Hi, everyone. Um, I think my 10 minutes is really just to make you aware of um, the existence of PhD theses in the UK and possibly their potential for text and data mining, not so sure. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about a few tiny projects, that, well, one big project and a few tiny projects where we've dabbled around the edges with PhD theses and um, spend a bit of time talking about the challenges of going a bit further in exploiting the content inside the pages of PhD theses. So... Um, what is a PhD thesis? I'm sure lots of you in the room have got a PhD and I'm sure you know exactly where you'd be able to retrieve a copy of your PhD apart from on your own shelf or your academic library shelf. Um, so essentially a PhD thesis is an exam paper originally. Um, that one on the screen, that picture is actually typically even now often in universities what they look like as they're being submitted these days. Lots of universities obviously are moving over to E. Um, you may be surprised to know that there's no national collection of UK PhD theses. They're a kind of um, an anomaly. They sit somewhere between formally published material and um, what in the library will be called grey literature, so unpublished, um, hard-to-find material. They um, aren't subject to legal deposit legislation, so there's never been a requirement for universities or PhD authors to deposit with the British Library. And um, in fact, we don't, we haven't got any, hardly any PhD physical print theses, um, but we do have the closest we have to a national aggregation of all UK theses, which I'm just going to mention in a minute. So the publication status is quite interesting, and um, obviously they're not um, published to make money, but there's always, of course, the copyright and rights implications behind them. So the, I'm sure lots of you in the room are familiar with Ethos, um, the Electronic Theses Online Service. It's the closest, as I say, thing to a national aggregation of UK PhD theses. The um, URL is ethos.bl.uk, so you can go and have a search um, anytime you like. Um, ignore the rather outdated search interface, just look at the content behind it. So Ethos... Um, harvests metadata from all the UK institutional repositories and by various routes we gather in metadata and records of as many UK theses as we possibly can. It's not a fully 100% collection um, and we also provide as far as possible an access route back to the full text thesis wherever it is if it's openly available. <coughs> so on this, this is just a screenshot, the British Library exhibition at the moment is on Gothic literature so a quick Gothic literature search shows that we've got 116 records in that in that subject area. Um, straightforward search results. And on this, this column here, the orange open access button t shows that there's a link that will take you to the thesis that's held in the institutional repository of the awarding university, whereas the PDFs show that we have got something like 130,000 PhD theses sitting in a bucket behind the ethos interface held by the BL. And often there are two copies of the same thesis. Um, why would you be interested in PhD theses? Well, a researcher fairly recently said that anything worthwhile in a thesis would have been published somewhere else anyway. So, you know, you can ignore PhDs and just go to the journal articles. Um, we did a, a user ethos user survey a, a year and a half ago, and we had lots and lots of comments like this. They're a fantastic source of data. Um, all sorts of different things. If you take a range of theses, you can see different trends in research, what's being funded, what are the top hot topics any, in any particular um, year or period, any particular university, you know, found more relevant materials to my study than in journals. There's all of this kind of thing going on behind theses. And of course, as well, um, often PhDs might have the negative results from scientific experiments and other things, which don't necessarily always get published in um, the more commercial published data uh, journals. So Ethos has something like 380,000 records for UK theses. And um, as I say, we provide access, I think, now to around 140,000 full text open theses. In the last five years, just to give you an idea of some figures, something like 20,000 PhDs are awarded every year. So in the last five years, there's around 100,000 were awarded. We say that every thesis has an average of 330 pages. So we're talking around 33 million pages of top research, often unique research. 
uh, and there are a few more figures there. So we're talking about 120 institutional repositories which we harvest the metadata from to build ethos. So I think the, the awareness of, of um, the value of the research content inside the PhD thesis is um, growing in awareness. The Royal Society of Chemistry last year undertook a project, um, a pilot project actually, to extract the compounds, chemical compounds, from all PhD theses um, that were hidden inside the pages of, of the theses. So they got together with the University of Bristol and other universities around the country, country and said, right, come on, let's get all these compounds, chemical compounds, loads of them will be new, and make them available for other people to do research on, which is what they did. What they actually did, because they were really uncertain about the um, copyright status of, university, of the PhDs, was to use these group of data collectors to manually sit with a load of theses, either in print or in PDF, and copy by hand the molecular structures when they found them and retype them into this ChemSpider database, which is an open access database of um, chemical compounds. In the four to six months that they were doing that, from 15 universities, they found over 45,000 chemical compounds, and around half of those were new and they hadn't been written about in any other um, source material. The potential of all of that chemical compound now is what the Royal Society of Chemistry are thinking about. They did it as a, did it as a pilot or manual. Um, what they would like to do is scale it up and do it on a national um, automated um, text mining process. But of course, if there's any slight commercial um, interest in there, then um, you're not allowed to do that under the new uh, text and data mining law. So I'll skip over those because I'm aware of the time. Um, the metadata itself for theses, I said we've got 380,000 th uh, records. Of those, I think about 75% now have an abstract. So you've actually got a lot of really, really good quality metadata. Um, and one of the fantastic things about Ethos is the quality of the metadata in there. And we've done a couple of things where we've supplied the metadata sets to projects. So the first one is this Virginia Tech Library of Congress subject classifications. Um, a large number of the ethos records don't have any subject classification. And you might think, well, nobody needs subject classification anymore. But actually, how do we supply the metadata to the Royal Society of Chemistry if we don't know which of those theses are chemistry theses in the first place? So what we've done is supply the whole of the metadata set to the Virginia Tech. And they are developing some um, algorithms which hopefully will take all the thesis metadata with an abstract and with subject classification and teach the algorithm to understand how to classify theses, and then they're going to apply that algorithm to the 30,000 that don't have any subject classification, and then every thesis record in the UK will have a subject tag assigned. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but that's what we've done. Um, another thing that we did was facilitate the provision of some theses to this project called FLAX, Interactive Language Learning. Um, so these two universities are developing, as a project, language resources for non-English speaking law stu students, but specifically this was for law. Um, and they thought that uh, UK theses, or PhD theses, have got that really interesting mix of very, very specific, accurate uh, language phrases and um, concepts and also quite uh, written in a very academic way and often uh, quite similar from one thesis to another. So it's a really good source material to add to something like these language, language learning um, resources. <coughs> Have I run out of time? Or am I right? Um, so, we, uh, so they came to us and said, can we use some UK theses in, in, uh, for our project to extract all of these key <coughs> phrases? Um, and actually, what we've, what we've done is only facilitate and being a, a bit of go-between between the project and universities around the country for a number of reasons. So the difficulties come, there's all this potential, but actually we've got all these theses in different universities around the country. We've got a big bucket of them at, at, um, the, at the British Library. So the first question is, how on earth do you find the ones that you want out of the 130,000, or maybe you just select them all? Um, and I've talked a bit about subject, data, uh, subject searching, so that's one question. How do you know what you want to search? Bristol, Bristol and Royal Society of Chemistry, they could have searched everything. 
or they really wanted just the chemistry thesis. And actually what they wanted was just the chemistry thesis that might have a chemical compound in there. Um, but of course, we don't know that until they've done the text mining. So that's that. The other thing is file formats. Uh, virtually every PhD that we've ever come across is in a PDF, um, often locked completely. Um, often universities, as their, their student deposit format, is, is the requirement is a locked PDF. So something like this one, you might be able to do some um, you know, unpicking and um, undo the OCR and do some analysis. But then some of the digitized theses look more like this, lots of errors, lots of crossings out. So over to you guys to do something with all that, that kind of data. Then, of course, IPR concerns. So the question first is, if you've got these PDFs and you want to make a copy, is that legal? Do you have the right to do that? You've, I'm sure you've talked about this all morning. I haven't been here all morning. Um, and then having taken that material out, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to publish it? Do you want to do that lawfully? So um, I think I'll skip over that one. The um, Skip all these. I've got rather too many slides. One minute, yeah. So the um, I've got a, this flax is interesting. So really what they did was, what they wanted us to do was to say, yeah, here's a link, just go here and you can extract all the theses and all the material you wanted. But actually what they did, they came to us and said that, and we asked the universities because we didn't feel that we were in a position to be able to supply those theses without the um, express permission of the universities. Now, probably legally, strictly speaking, now with the new copyright law, they could have just gone and taken them without our permission. But because we've got this interesting relationship between the UK universities and ethos, we work really collaboratively with them and we didn't want to, at this early stage, it's more of a learning, learning curve, I think, in, what, uh, um, in what's allowed and what, what the potential is for theses. So we said to universities, does anybody want to supply a few law theses to FLAX? Um, we got a few people saying, yeah, that's a great idea, we'd love to do that. Um, so they came back to us and said that. We told FLAX, FLAX then went straight to the universities. So it was all rather long-winded. And in fact, some universities did supply um, their law theses to FLAX. Ideally, this would be the workflow, obviously. So just in summary, um, there's all this massive potential, but the bulk access to them is very difficult. Um, the uh, format of the theses is pretty unstructured and probably quite challenging. And there's no kind of organizational structure to all of this huge uh, corpus of material. And the, um, the IPR challenges, as it says there, the deposit agreements vary hugely from one university to another and from date to date. So more and more, the, the deposit um, agreements are covering things like text mining. The older ones, they're not. Um, and then once you've got that information, what can you do with it? And I think some of the other speakers, and you've already said, <coughs> the compounds, because they were facts, they were able to republish them. But anything like the, um, the, um, the experimental process and the description of the experimental process that, that came before that picture um, does carry copyright. So you cannot then just automatically republish that. Um, but looking forward, I'm right out of time, what my message is that universities actually are really, really keen for people to come and have a go at playing with their theses in, text mining, in, um, in the text mining sense. So the operational and access challenges are really hard, but I think the willingness is there. So if anyone's got the time, the energy, the resource and the know-how to unpick all of these PDFs and do something interesting to support further research, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.